And with the situation in New York continuing to deteriorate, the Rickers Island prison is an area that has been particularly chaotic in the light of COVID-19. For more, I'm joined by Elisa Orleans. She is a public defender in New York City and a Manhattan district attorney candidate. Elisa, good evening and thanks for joining us on CTV News Channel. Appreciate it. Hi, thanks for having me on. So what is the situation like in New York currently and specifically what are conditions like at Rickers Island? So we have a public health catastrophe looming here in New York. I mean, New York City is, is badly affected by COVID-19 as it is. Um, but the numbers that we're seeing out of Rikers Island, and these are from a couple of days ago, so I assume that they are higher now, are rising exponentially. And we're seeing seven times New York City numbers at Rikers, and we're seeing 87 times the number of cases in the United States at Rikers Island right now. And this is, I mean, there's like a, they're calling it like a tinderbox scenario where as this virus spreads, the health and safety of not only the individuals incarcerated there, but the risk to the community, the risk to people who work there and to health workers across our city um, is, is increased exponentially. And these numbers are just going to get worse. I mean, this isn't like a natural disaster where, well, we don't know, we're preparing as best as we can, we don't know what the numbers are gonna be. We can model this out and people can see and determine exactly how many people are going to be affected by this, mm -hmm. given the conditions at Rikers, which include, you know, 29 people to a toilet, no access to soap or hand sanitizer, you know, everybody eating communally, no, no masks or gloves, you know, the people who are even preparing the food are reusing trays. I mean, it is an epic, epic disaster. Wow. Okay. As a public uh, defender, you, of course, listed your concerns of what's happening in the prison at the moment. But do we know of what precautions are being taken? They are aware there are cases right now that are on, they're positive. But what are they doing inside that particular facility? Do we know of that? So it's, it's my understanding that they are trying to separate people who have shown symptoms, but unfortunately that's inadequate. And we're, we're being told that folks who are incarcerated are being advised um, to, to social distance by sleeping from head to foot instead of with their heads on the same side of the cell. But as we well know, the overcrowding of our jails and prisons create this situation where you have no ability to distance if you're feeling unwell and if you think that the alternative might be that you're going to be removed and locked up in in a in solitary confinement for example then you might hesitate to be forthcoming with your symptoms um and that we simply don't have enough tests you know contribute to just this this massive uh number of cases that we're seeing out of Rikers Island and the overcrowding is such that that this outbreak will just get worse and worse as time elapses and as right. there's a failure to act. And very briefly, Eliza, the mayor is talking about uh, releasing about, I think, uh, 300 nonviolent people from Rikers and also saying that 1,100 people can be out on technical parole violations, et cetera. What do you make of these developments? Um, you know, these are great developments because what we need to do is release as many people as possible to to stop this crisis in its tracks. Um, and the, the reality is that incarceration is and always has been a public health crisis. And COVID-19 is just bringing to light and to urgent light the need to change these situations. But the people who are being incarcerated, for the most part, are people who are detained pretrial. And in the United States, we're supposed to have a presumption of innocence, one that you are presumed innocent until proven guilty. And unfortunately, people who are being detained pretrial have not yet been convicted of anything. And mm. yet we're telling them that inaction could cause them to get severely ill or even die. Okay. So this is a huge, huge issue. And I'm glad that the mayor and governor are addressing this. But district attorneys need to act as well. Right. Major concerns there from that prison facility. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Eliza Orleans from New York. Appreciate your time. Thank you.